Hi, this is Ofori, the digital reader, and my favorite reading tracker is Bookshelf, the reading tracker. If anyone is interested in a reading tracker, that's going to be the one that I recommend with the highest recommendation, but it is only for iOS. So I started to look for uh, another reading tracker since I've been using more and more Android devices and I also wanted a reading tracker I could recommend to people who just used Android and also I wanted one to recommend to people who used iOS and Android and wanted a reading tracker that was cross-platform and trust me there are quite a few and in looking at all of these there basically were five things that were non-negotiable it had to be cross-platform, had to cost less than $350 a month or have a lifetime membership. It had to allow you to export your data via CSV. It had to allow timed reading sessions and it had to have good reading and reading speed stats. So once I looked at that long list, I basically uh, whittled it down to two final candidates, BASMO, and Bookmary. So I'm going to be using Basmo for the next couple weeks to get a feel for that, but I've already used Bookmary. So this is an overview of Bookmary and kind of what it does, just so you can kind of get a sense of it. Once again, I don't think it's as good as Bookshelf the Reading Tracker, but it is cross platform. It meets all of my key points. As far as pricing, Bookmarie is $349 a month if you buy it monthly, and it's $30.99 if you buy the uh, annual membership. So let's dive in there and let's get started uh, looking at Bookmarie. If you don't have a book, then you can click one of those pluses to add a book and when you click one of those pluses then it le lets you know you can search using a keyword search you can scan the barcode of a book if you're in a bookstore you're looking at a physical book and you want to add it or you can just type in an input if basically you the book doesn't show up in the search or you don't have a barcode you can just fill in all of the information manually um, the book I'm going to be searching for is uh, Shadow and Bone. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in Bone and then you'll kind of see some options pull up and there it is Shadow and Bone. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Once I click on Shadow and Bone, you can see the information's already filled out. It gives me as whether I can choose whether it's a paperback, an ebook or an audio book. Um, it gives me a page, percentage, or episode. Usually I'll go with page. And one thing I should note is whenever you choose an ebook, it will automatically change it to percentage. If because a lot of ebook readers use percentage, but you just, just remember to click it back to page. It'll have your total page number. You can easily change that since sometimes that varies with ebooks and epubs. And you can go ahead and put that information in. And of course, it's going to have the blurb about the information. It'll ask if you want to add it to your wish list, uh, what the status of it is, then you can put it in. It also has a purchase log and loan records. Purchase log is when you bought the book, where and when. You can write some notes. And the uh, loan records are if you're borrowing it from some type of service. Once you have all that, then you can just click Save. And once you click save, you'll see it tells you the book's been added to your lib your personal library. And now you'll see a little icon for Shadow and Bone. You can now get ready to start reading it. You'll uh, read on the book, and once you finish your reading session, you can go in here and you can put um, how much you read. You can put how long you read for. Um, you don't have to put time, but one of the main reasons why I like reading trackers is you can put time. You're going to put in the final status. Um, are you still reading it? Uh, are you pausing a reading session? Because you can time reading sessions with an actual timer. Um, did you give it up or have you finished the book? Have you read it all? Once you've done that, you can click save and 
it will take you back out to the book. And let me just jump in to kind of show you what kind of information they're storing after your reading session. So you can show the read will start. It'll show you how long you read for and what day. And it also breaks it down each day, all the different reading sessions that you had on any particular day. We're going to skip over the light bulb, which is the notes section. We're going to jump to the achievement section and the achievement section will just show you how many books you've read and what you've rated them. And we're going to jump back and we're going to go to the home section or the library section. And we're going to take a look at the kind of stats they give you. So you see you have your daily statistics and then you have your annual statistics. And I feel like they do have pretty good stats for their annual statistics. How many books you read in average in a year, most per month. You can put your reading goals, your page count statistics, your average reading hours. And it also breaks down all the books you read every month, which is also nice. And then it's the My Page section. And the My Page section is basically just the settings section. So it'll have all of the, the um, settings you can take to individualize your experience and to do things outside of the basic book reading experience. So you have your book settings. Your note taking settings. What kind of notifications you want to get? Do you want to get reminders? Do you want to get notified on your device when a book needs to be returned? You have your data settings so you can import um, and export to CSV. Um, you can just reset all the data, problems, and then other settings. Uh, for, so you have your lock settings, your language settings, date format, uh, congratulations, Basically, congratulations is just a setting that lets you give a congratulatory message when certain things occur. Um, the book calendar settings, the laboratory settings, you can create a temporary backup, you can merge a database, and you can export log data. And then how to use, I just thought I would show this to you just so you can see, but it's pretty bare bones. and then just terms of use and the privacy policy. So now we're gonna go back to the library and I'm gonna show you the uh, note taking portion of it. So basically you click to add a note. You can input the note yourself free form. You can take a picture of text with your camera or you can pull out text from a photo. So this is pretty cool if you're reading a book and there's a passage you like Instead of typing out the whole passage, you can just take a picture of that passage in the book or on the uh, e-reading device and it'll store that information. And then you can index it later on by giving it um, what page it was on and when you read it. And I'll show that in a second. So you can see if you wanna input the information yourself, you have the date, um, what page it was on, you can go ahead and enter your notes and it will give you, let you put in a range of pages if it's a, something that happened across several pages, like there was a really good section of the book that you want to call out. And then when you click the image icon, it'll ask you if you're taking an image from a camera or from a gallery. And then if you want to click a camera and pull out text, which um, it can do it lasts if you want to do it with your camera or if you're pulling out the text from a photo So now let's jump to the notes section uh, The notes section is where all of your notes are going to be stored and with the notes section There's a couple things that you can do with each note so You can click so you know how many times you looked at that note that might be of interest you can like the note if it was a note or a phrase or something that you really liked and you really want to pop up and you can see up top at the right it'll show you how many notes you liked you like so you can just click it and jump straight to those notes that you liked 
you can copy it to the clipboard and this is real useful if you have a note and you want to store that note someplace else outside of this program you can copy it to the clipboard and paste it in a word document or email or something like that and then this is a little bit more introspective but you can look at your notes and then write a note within a note kind of which were what are your thoughts on this note and I think this is good if you're making notes and reading passages for books that you want to kind of review what you thought of that passage or that piece in that book and how it affected you I don't really take notes like that but some people do and then you can uh, reset the red count and the red count was that checkbox which shows how many times you read it or you can delete the note if you want and that's a quick overview of book Mori. Um, like I said this is definitely an app I would recommend to somebody who's looking for a reading tracker for Android uh, I definitely would also recommend if you're gonna get it to go with the annual price of thirty dollars and ninety nine cents instead of three dollars and forty nine cents a month just because it's much cheaper um, over the next couple months I'm going to be looking at Basmo and seeing how I feel about that but this is an overview of book Marie and hopefully it was of interest to you this is Ofori the digital reader and as always keep reading